Okay, so uh, Reddit has spoken once again, and this uh, this render did really well on the Blender subreddit. And so here we are back with another breakdown. Um, this one's actually very similar to my last breakdown in the way this sort of render kind of looks. Uh, it's a very metallic, sort of spinny um, sci-fi thing, but most everything is very different um, when it comes to how I made it. So, yeah, I'm going to get into how I did this, just sort of the animation. Well, let's look around the scene first. So this is the room. I'll show you how I modeled all those boxes in our displacement. Um, but that's the room. We just got one area lamp over here. And then if I can turn up my, my overlays here, we got another area lamp pointing here, giving it sort of a blue, subtle um, color variation there. And yeah, we just got some cool stuff going on with this. So I'll show you how I modeled these real quick. Um, I did the same thing in the abstract still life tutorial, but we'll just go over it really quickly. Um, so what I did was I basically added a circle and the curves. And then in the geometry, I gave it fill mode of full and then just extruded it a bit and then gave it some some depth and then we just sort of duplicated them down okay so how I animated this um, I made sure that in my preferences on my keyframe keyframe key keyframe interpolation made it sure that it was on Bezier so that gives it that nice um, speed up and slow down when the animation starts and stops uh, so that's super important um, and so basically what I did was I went over and I had the rotation done like this Okay, so right now it says 90. Um, we need to apply that rotation, but before we do, we have to convert it. We have to convert these to a mesh. Otherwise, when we hit apply, it does this weird thing. So I have to I have to go in and convert all these to a mesh. Okay, so they're all converted to a mesh. Uh, that's really important because if it's just you keep it as a curve, you won't be able to go in and um, give it these lights that you know give it that interesting look to it. So make sure you do that. Uh, and that would be just go to convert. You type in convert and you click mesh uh, from curve, blah, blah, blah. Um, so for the animation, again, right now it says um, 90. And we want to rotate, it, rotate this at 360 degrees. And so I want this to say zero, but if it says zero, it's there. And we don't want that. So you just hit control A and then you apply the rotation and now it's at zero. And so we're just going to hit keyframe and then all the way at the end here, we're going to give it 360 degrees and it just does a simple animation. So how I added um, for just for the animation itself, one starts and the next one comes to the next one and the next one. Um, so I basically just did them um, uh, the way I did that was, I had each of them start five frames one after the other. So this one starts at frame one. So the next one, I'm going to have it start, give it a keyframe, go to the very end, 360 degrees, go there, and now they start right after the other. Um, I believe it was actually maybe every 10 keyframes. Yeah, so every 10, um, they would start. So this one, I would give it up to the keyframe 20, give it a keyframe, and then 360 degrees, boom, and now they animate nicely. Um, it's just really visually, very visually pleasing animation. Um, so the all I, I did that for all on the on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis I I switched up just a little bit. So I'm going to animate these, and I'll show you how to did it on the y. Okay, so I finished um, animating them on the X axis. Um, but when I was animating this, I wanted it to be more interesting rather than just rotating them on one axis. And you'll see it's on both axes. But the way I did the order of that animation um, was when I went to animating the Y axis, instead of starting it on frame one, I would start at five frames after the start of the X. So I would give it, um, let's see, let me go back here click this one. So I would start at zero here, give it a keyframe, and then go to the end, 360, just the same procedure except five frames after. 
And then what that does is it sort of starts it out and then it speeds up the animation in a really interesting way. Uh, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to explain, but you, you see it working. So instead of starting it at 10, like that one does, we're gonna start it at 15, and then we're just gonna give it a keyframe, go to the end, and you get the idea. And I just did that on all of them, and it gives it this really interesting speed um, that the original animation has, and it's just fun. It just looks really cool, and it gives it that crazy, um, that crazy animation. It's really fun. I'm super proud of it. Um, so next thing I want to talk about is this wall. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to delete everything here. Just start a new, a new thing. Basically, we're just going to um, demonstrate it on a plane. I'm going to subdivide it 100 times. We're going to give it a subdivision surface modifier and a displace. And what it is is distorted noise. And then I went into the noise bias and the distortion, and I turned it on cell noise. And that just gives us a bunch of squares. And it's simple as that. Just brought it down a little bit, and I just added it to our box. And yeah, if you've ever heard of JS placement, this is sort of a blender way of making a JS placement model, basically. And simple as that. And is there anything else? Yes, these right here. So how did I do that? So I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate it here. Um, we'll just do the same thing. So um, we have these vertices basically. So you can click on one. If you hold Alt, it clicks these the ones all in the middle. And um, basically, what what I did was I took the vertices and I assigned them a particular um, a particular shader. So I'll demonstrate how you do that. So first, we're going to give it a um, good metallic shader, make it dark, and then I went in. And first thing I did was I inset the faces. I clicked individual and I just brought them in. And then I stayed in the selection menu. We brought in a new shader, gave it emission, and then I gave it a strength of 50, just give it a color. And then when it's they're selected, the orange ones, you just click assign. And now you have them assigned to that. And it's simple as that. You can go in and do that to any model you want. Just have the selected vertices and you assign it to that specific vertice. And yeah, I think that about wraps up. Um, for the for the sort of displacement you see here, I went to the bump nodes and I added a noise texture to a bump node. And super simple there. And yeah, that's a breakdown of this scene. I hope you learned some stuff. Oh, forgot one more thing. I just added a brick texture to this node here and I did some insetting to the sphere there. All really simple modeling techniques, but if you add them all together, you'll get a really cool, interesting composition. Um, yeah, nothing nothing too crazy complicated with this one, but it looks really cool. And yeah, there you go. Hope you uh, enjoyed watching this.